Nobody at TikTok has to make it that decision to show the harmful product or a trend to a child. It's all done autonomously via an algorithm, whereas like if you're talking about Disney Channel cartoons that might perpetuate harmful stereotypes or something, like there, there is at least a human level where you can intervene and exercise some sort of moral discretion. Use social media to pacify instead of teaching this kid how to use this responsibly. That's up to the parents. You need to teach your child, you need to take care of your child and raise your right. kid. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's Boy Blue. We're here. We're back with another video. Let's go ahead and get right into it. This one's going to be um, a continuation from the last video that we had with Jubilee Pro versus anti-social media. Now, the thing that I have in regards to social media that I heavily dislike, it, it went from being an adult thing to now anybody can have it or it's accessible to you. I'm not even that everybody can have it, but like even when I was younger and I wasn't in college, which Facebook was supposed to be for the way that things are being now and how more accessible it was. If you had a computer back in the day and you knew about Facebook and that was because somebody more than likely in college had a Facebook, then you knew about Facebook. I only knew about Facebook because my older sister was on Facebook. I'm like, Oh, Facebook. All right, cool. Let me go ahead and make my account and stuff like that. But with technology growing, we now see that there's plenty of kids that are on every single social media that's out there. Plenty of children. That's just their thing all the way from being an adult to being like these kids, more like eight year olds that have Snapchats, that have TikToks, that have Instagrams and stuff like that. You have adults that have Instagram pages for their kids and stuff like that. And social media just somehow became a part of life for a lot of people, but it's unrealistic unless you're putting up something that's actually bringing people together. Like for instance, one of the YouTubers that I love to death, Corey Kenshin. Yes, he was a video gamer and yes, he did streaming and stuff like that. But the community that he had was always loving and everything that he put out was literally just that. If you want to take some time and watch somebody act dumb while playing a video game, here you go. But it was always genuine with him and nothing was ever forced. He didn't have to sit here and curse up a storm and act like, you know, trying to get the next best wave. He was just being him and his success is astronaut. I think he's one of the most successful YouTubers. I go to his YouTube page, a lot of the videos that he has over 5 million views. So when it comes to the age requirement with social media, yeah, there should be an age requirement. There should be limits, but at the end of the day, it's really just a matter of uh, the parents allowing the access of social media for the kid. But even then there's always going to be a way for a kid to get what they want. So it's tough. It's a tough thing. Should there be an age limit? Yes. Is it easy to enforce? No, unless you literally live in the middle of nowhere. But let's see what these kids have to say. Let's check it out. Social media should have an age requirement. If you agree, please step forward. Nobody at Instagram or nobody at TikTok has to make it that decision to show the harmful product or a trend to a child. It's all done autonomously via an algorithm. Whereas like if you're talking about Disney Channel cartoons that might perpetuate harmful stereotypes or something like there, there is at least a human level where you can intervene and exercise some sort of moral discretion. Also with no federal privacy legislation, it's just we're, we're putting so many kids data at risk and they don't necessarily know the harms of what to share, what not to share. I, I know when I was younger, I, I wish I didn't post certain Certain things and I think people are going to grow up and have that digital trail behind them that digital footprint of things maybe yeah. they wish they didn't post due to a lack of child online safety legislation that puts even adults I'm pretty sure there's plenty of adults right now especially with all the events that happened recently that just look straight up crazy on social media because of the election and that's going to follow them for a while everyone at a big risk especially children if your child is 13, but they have like the social awareness of an eight year old, do not give them social media under like any circumstance. But there already is like age limits, like on TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram, it's like 12 and up, I think. I don't know, it might be. 13 is the age of adulthood on the internet. Okay, 13, but if you're not mature enough, it's just a parent's decision to be like, you're not ready, I'm sorry, but no, and you have to respect that. So you think there should be a requirement, but it should be enforced by parents, yes. not like a law. Yeah, there it's kind of just a parent's decision to me. The problem that's happening nowadays is that parents are just letting their kids. I mean, that was the case before parents. They uh, well, especially like with my parents, I didn't know nothing about the Internet. 
I was able to just do whatever. But nowadays, parents are intentionally allowing their kids do whatever. Not all of them, just a lot of them. And it's it's not okay. I don't think it's okay because the internet is very, very dangerous and it will influence your kids in ways that you may not want. And then when they come up with stuff that you would never thought that they're going to come up with, you're like, oh, I didn't expect this to happen. But all you're going to do is just sit here and affirm whatever heck is going on, not saying the whole trans thing and stuff like that. But honestly, that could be a part of it. There's just so much information that's just pushed out now that when your kids are young, these are the times when everything that they hear is going to be ingrained within them. So if you're not vigilant and knowing exactly what's being put into your kid, then later on when they get older and they actually express all these things that they've internalized and you're confused, well, pay attention to what your kid is doing and then maybe you'll know. But no, just we're just going to give them the phone, give them the iPad. And I'm not even going to hold you. I'm low-key guilty. When I'm busy and I have stuff that I need to get done and my wife has stuff that we need to get done, a lot, of, a lot of times we do give them the iPad. I've been very vigilant as of recently and lately of making sure that they're, if we're not doing anything, they're doing something other than being on the iPad. Or if they're watching something, they're watching something that I've already seen before so that I already know exactly what's going to be on there. Social media is, I guess, is a different case because they're not on social media. They're watching videos. But even then, just the internet in general. Gotcha. Let's bring in our disagreeers. I was a kid once. So... It didn't matter like what age limit was on there. I was gonna sneak on and lie or anything. <laughs> so it's just like I understand we should, you know, put regulations on social media, but that also kind of like takes away from the responsibility and accountability of the parents not informing their children of what goes on on the internet. And a lot of parents are just negligent in that. They use the they use social media to pacify instead of teaching this kid how to use this responsibly. That's up to the parents. You need to teach your child. You need to take care of your child and raise your right. kid. That's up to you. Right. There's so much literature out there that you can find equal amounts that'll say this will have this amount of effect on your mental health, this will have this detrimental effect on XYZ. And the same amount of studies will say this helps bring broader activism to the table and organize people in a certain way. Then you can find more that are like it creates alienation or whatever. If you're going to be able to find every single thing that's negative and positive about it. The issue being the practicality of having a restriction that's like hard and forced when it comes to like age limits. But it's just what happens when inevitably these students who are going to find a way to communicate with each other get on that social media anyway. Who's held liable for that? I feel like once you run into putting those hard limits on things, I don't think that this is as clear cut as an issue enough to be able to have that concrete barrier. Even if there is, the jury is still out like in the academic discourse about whether or not social media is directly responsible for a lot of the teen mental health crisis. And even if like, I'll grant you that, let's say a lot of the harms that you observe on social media are downstream of like older cultural issues. We're still in the midst of the largest teen youth mental health crisis that we've seen in decades, um, like thousands of children are dying, writ large if you look across the globe, even in countries that don't have the same like economic models, even in countries mm -hmm. that don't have the same cultural institutions. A teen mental health crisis starts everywhere and it happens when people get online. Quick follow-up I have is for people who think there should be an age requirement, what do you think an appropriate age is? Six 20. It's like that. 16 to create an account. 16. You can view if you're like on YouTube or, I mean TikTok's a little different, but you can view. You mm -hmm. can't create an account unless you're 16, as I would say. So, like the age of driving a car. Yeah, and like a lot of others, like signing into contracts, right? Yeah. What, a, um, what about you, um, you guys? I honestly, like, maybe this is a little extreme, but like 21. Because <laughs> I, like, I understand it's a little extreme, but isn't that when your brain is like, at the point of. 20, you're looking at me like, oh, I know. 25. 25. 25. 25. That frontal is a little cortex, for what is it, is developed? <laughs> Do you see it more as like kind of alcohol, like a substance, maybe? Because honestly, I feel like social media is addicting. At least my friends, something that I have a hard time with them is like, I'll be on FaceTime with them and they'll just be scrolling on TikTok for like eight hours and I'll just be like, what's the point of me being on the phone with you if I'm like not able to talk to you? The algorithm is so scary. Isn't it built by people who like make slot machines? And the element of the pull down, I think, is kind of inspired yeah. by Exactly, design. and mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I definitely 100,000% agree with you on like, how do you even define mentally ready to go on such a on an app like social media. I totally agree with what everyone has said. I think it's very hard to enforce at a policy level 
Um, people are going to lie. Same thing that happens with smoking, with drinking. People do it before the age requirement. But I do think it's important for parents to emphasize this to their children, for our culture as a whole to understand that there are negative consequences to using social media too young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you hear those ages, what comes to mind? Uh, I mean, I think it was you who said 16? That's right. 16? I, I just, me personally, I find that a little bit baffling. Obviously, the position I'm in and just trying to wrap my head around that the age where you can operate a motored vehicle is the same age you can be on social media. I just feel like that's so unrealistic. You know what I mean? Mm. I feel like that's unrealistic. And like you said, it's hard to, you know, people are always going to find a way to bypass it. The thing is, I can see why it's unrealistic to him because he's been on it for a very long time and fortunate for him. He's been very successful, but the majority of the people are not going to have the success that he has at his age. There's a lot of kids on social media nowadays that are never going to reach that potential. So yes, he was blessed enough to be at this situation. And I understand why he would think that that's too high of an age, but honestly, it's just a matter of what you're doing with your life. And here's the thing with technology that I dis that people don't realize when it comes to technology, technology innovation makes it easier for you to do something. There's not a need for social media. Is it the way that life is changing now? Yes. But when you're that young, is it needed? No, it's not. When you're younger, you don't need social media. You have movies, you have TVs, you have Netflix, you have school, you have whatever sports that you have, you have church. Why do you need social media to look at all the dumb stuff that people are doing online? What are you using social media for so that you can, I don't know, educate yourself, entertain yourself in a sense where, and the thing is with the whole scrolling thing, you just quickly scroll, go to the next thing, go to the next thing. So all the endless scrolling, I just, I mean, it's, it's, I think we give social media way more weight than it needs. It's not something that's needed. If you look at people from other countries and not trying to be stereotypical, but like Asian specifically, Chinese, Asian specifically from Japan, from India, stuff like that, especially those that are from India. Why are they so smart? Why are they so educated? They're not, they're not using their time on social media because is that a necessity for them to be where they're at? No. It's not. So it's not a necessity. That's the thing. To them, it feels like a necessity because that's what they've been indoctrinated with when they were younger. So it becomes a part of their life. And as it progresses and it changes, they invested so much time into it that it just naturally becomes a part of them as well. So they feel like, oh yeah, at some point everybody needs to have social media. N no. Honestly, the best times that I have is when I'm completely absent of what's going on in the world, which is weird because I'm doing this YouTube thing. But honestly, that's when I'm the most calmest, I'm most peace, like everything that's going on out in the world, I could know, but I could also not know. They, my life will continue because I know what my purpose is. I know what I need to do. I know the jobs that God has been assigning me to do. So I do them until it becomes a necessity, then okay. But as of right now, it's not a necessity. It's not a necessity for everybody. But when you put yourself in situations where it could be used as a tool and you use that tool a lot, then it starts to feel like it's a necessity. Let's keep going. The age verifications and things like that, and same thing with smoking and drinking and all those things are done before the proper age. And I feel like pushing it and making it higher makes people want to do it more. Well, and, that, and that's why it wouldn't be a complete ban. It would just say you can't create an account and post it and engage in like the ways that a lot of users do. A lot of people I talk to credit like the early benefits of YouTube or TikTok as like this taught me something that I would never learn in school. And like that's so powerful. Yeah. And you still get to do that. Mm -hmm. this way. I mean, I get it. Like, and, and there's a lot of kids who are going through like terrible stuff right now. And TikTok's all they have. That's how they mm -hmm. made all their friends because they can't make a friend at school. I know how that was, man. Like I was that kid. I couldn't make a friend, so. Yeah, man. I mean, but yeah, I understand. There are a lot of people who've built a lot of stuff, whether it comes to friend groups or. That's fair. I'll, I'll give them that. I'll give them that. Just getting through issues or whatever through social media, where it's like, I don't know what effect, like having a you can't create an account until this age or whatever, uh, would, would have on those people, too. I think also. I, I agree with what you're saying. I work in social media reform, and what we want to do is we want to increase the, the social part of social media. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about, what I hear, is you're talking about the social benefits of social media, like putting the social in social media. But to go back to what Sophia was saying, social media 
is created with the intermittent variable reward system, which basically triggers random rewards at different times, whether that's a like on a post or a comment or a new follower, whatever the case may be, to maximize your attention span. Well, and with like that, that, we're seeing such a rise media. in different attention deficit disorders, anxiety, and I think it's unfair to set our kids up for failure. So while there are benefits, I think if we can maybe pull the best from social media, a messaging app or something that doesn't directly rely on giving your information to show you targeted ads to keep you on the algorithm longer, because that's the whole profit model of social media. And that's where it gets dangerous it for young people. We're extracting their information to keep them on a screen longer, to show them the perfect algorithm, to then show them targeted ads, which then makes the platform money. So I think we're giving our kids anxiety and like giving them an addiction. Um, we're giving them like a, a slot machine in their pocket, basically. I think if we can put the social back in social media, mm -hmm. I would be in support of younger people having it. But with the current state now, I think a child has no business being on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, anything that's gonna be extracting their data for the company to profit mm -hmm. from interesting take uh like it's it's weird the way that the world is evolving i feel like it's evolving way too quickly and because it's evolving quick everything's just kind of being thrown at you and then you kind of just take it and then the more things that are thrown at you the more you're just kind of taking it in i mean with this new generation that's coming in they're coming into the social media life and that's kind of like the new way of knowing what's going on with people without really knowing said person i guess really it just depends on what your perspective is on social media to me social media has a bad connotation to it but that's because i'm seeing the way that social media is kind of affecting the infinite or what do they call it the doom scrolling and chatting and verifying and just trying to get things for likes and stuff and worrying about the next best thing the fear of missing out yeah fomo like it's it's it to me it's a hindrance but y'all let me know in the comment section which i think should there be an age limit for social media how has social media even affected you and what do you think people should be doing in regards to social media y'all know what to do go ahead and like this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel and if you haven't hit that bell so that you know exactly when the next video is coming up i'm gonna catch you on the next one take it easy peace